Hello, and welcome to a journey of change. This journey has the power to help you reach your highest goals and reach your full potential. As I stand here today, I'm not just going to talk. I'm going to be your guide and show you the seven steps that will help you reach your goals. There's been a time when we let our dreams stay in the realm of the possible, unrealized, and untapped. Tomorrow is a new day, though, and we will start over on our path to success and self-actualization. Let us let go of the fears and doubts that have been holding us back as we start this journey together. Instead, let us embrace the endless opportunities that lie ahead of us. With each step we take, we're getting closer to the life we've always dreamed of and the person we've always wanted to be. We can close the gap between where we are now and where we want to be by following these seven steps with discipline. This will turn our goals from vague dreams into real things. Let's not be scared off by how big the job is. Instead, let's break it up into doable steps that will bring us closer to the top of the success ladder. Let's promise ourselves again that we will follow our dreams with each step, knowing that each step brings us one step closer to reaching our goals. Let's look into these seven steps with open thoughts and hearts, knowing that we all have the power to change our lives. Let's start this journey of growth and learning together, making sure that we can get through any problem and reach any goal we set our sights on. Have you ever felt like someone had more luck than you or that their luck never ran out? Do you think it's possible to make luck happen? It's easier than you think to learn how to be lucky. I will show you seven of the best ways to get lucky that you can learn. You can quickly add any of these lucky things to your life and they will all make it twice as effective in very little time. You can now make your own luck. Clarity. Being clear is the first thing you can do to make your own luck. It only means that you know exactly what you want, which may be the most important thing for luck at first. You will be more aware of the chances and opportunities to reach your goal if you're clear on what you want. You'll have an easier time getting what you want if you are very clear about it. People who are successful know exactly who they are, what they want, and what they need to do to get there. People who are unhappy and failing, on the other hand, often don't know what they think or what they really want out of life. You can't hit something you can't see. As the saying goes, lucky people seem to have a very clear idea of what they want to achieve and how they can get there. Make a list of all the things you want to do in the next 12 months. Getting a piece of paper and writing down at least 10 things you want to do in the next 12 months is one of the easiest ways to change your luck. It might not look like a hard practice, but less than 3% of adults will do it at some point in their lives. And those 3% will end up at the top of all of the companies or organizations they work for. Some people say that all you need is a pen and paper to start being successful and wealthy. 97% of people who walk today don't have any plans. Putting pen to paper and writing down the 10 things you want to accomplish in the next 12 months puts you in the top 3% of people alive. Right now, it only takes 3 to 5 minutes. Plan how you'll get what you want. One important thing that makes people lucky is that they ask themselves, Would I like to know if this would serve me? When they hear a good idea, unlucky people, on the other hand, always ask themselves, Will this serve me for anything? The lucky person always asks, How? When they think about something they want, they always ask themselves, how can I get it or acquire it? This way of thinking seems to make their subconscious and conscious minds see possibilities and come up with ideas that will help them reach their goals. But when you say yes, your brain seems to shut down its creative abilities. There is a, a small organ that looks like a finger. It is called the reticular cortex. This part of the brain is like a phone exchange. It decides what information can get to your eyes, ears, and other senses. This reticular cortex lets you focus on the parts of your surroundings that are important to you and ignore the rest because it is constantly getting hundreds of thousands of messages from all sorts of directions. This part of your brain is activated when you have a clear goal. When order a wish or even a fear, for instance, if you really want to buy a red sports car and are really excited about the idea of it, you will start to see red sports cars everywhere. The reticular cortex will pick up on that same car coming around the corner two or three blocks ahead of you and send it to your conscious thought. But are people who are great just luckier? We know that successful people constantly think about what they want. 
This trains their reticular cortex to make them more alert to and aware of the chances and opportunities that are out there to help them reach their goals. People who have failed or been unlucky always think that these goals are probably out of reach and send an unintended message to their reticular cortex, telling it not to pay attention to ideas or chances that come up in their environment. People who are successful are said to always seem to know what they want and be driven to get it. People who have failed are said to not know what they want in life. Be very clear about what you want to achieve. Think of this luck factor as a light switch in a dark room where you're going to throw darts. As soon as you know exactly what you want to achieve, you turn the dimmer switch all the way up to full light and the dark board becomes as clear as glass. If you throw darts at this kind of board from a long way away in a dark room, you have a much lower chance of hitting the bullseye. The second way luck works is through action. Being very active, especially being proactive, makes you do more things, which makes it more likely that you will do the right thing at the right time and in the right way. For instance, if you won a prize for flipping a coin 100 times, the best way to make sure you win that prize would be to flip the coin as many times as possible in the least amount of time. It would not have been a matter of luck at all if you did win the prize. It would just depend on how often you tried to flip heads. Being self-reliant is the first step to getting things done because all high-performance men and women are very action-oriented and rely on themselves a lot. They look to themselves, solve their problems, they understand that no one helps them. People stop looking for other people to do things for them when they believe they are fully responsible for their own life, job, health, family, and money. Instead of making excuses, you start to move forward. You understand that you are who and where you are because of yourself. You have to make the changes you need to make right away if you want to be or do something different. If you want to have more happiness, you should have a strong desire to act. Feel like you need to do something right away and move quickly. You have more energy when you move faster. You get more experience as you move faster. If you move faster, you'll get more done and be more successful. Mastery, getting better at something, has always been a great way to get lucky. With knowledge and know-how, you can do well. You will always get paid based on how well you do your job and how hard it would be to replace you. The era of work is over and the age of mental power has begun. As much or more than any other trait, your luck and success in a given area will depend on how much you know and how good you are at it. Learn everything you can about your subject. People today are paid based on how well they do their job, not how old they are or how long they've been working there. You'll have more luck if you're better. If you want to be in the top 1% of your area, you have to be willing to pay anything and Put in the time to get there. When it comes to skill, luck may be the most important thing that can help you be very successful. You can have all the chances in the world, though, if you're not good at what you do. Power. Having power is another important way to improve your luck. People who are successful always seem to have a lot more energy than people who are not successful. They get up early and get to work faster. During the day and night, they work longer hours. And in the nights and on the weekends, they spend time on things other than their jobs. In a lucky quote, the writer said, I believe in luck, and the harder I work, the luckier I get. The harder you work, the more you accomplish. The more you accomplish, the more you will catch the attention of people who can open doors for you and help you climb even higher and faster. There's nothing like a reputation for hard work to put you on the fast track of any career you choose. Personality. How you learn and how lucky you are depend on your personality. More people will want to be around you and help you in any way they can if you are happy, positive, and upbeat. People who are lucky are often also happy and upbeat. People get along with them and they have a lot of friends and contacts in many different places. You are more likely to meet the right person at the right time who can open the door to the right chance if you know a lot of good people. Almost every time you have good luck, someone is standing there at the same time, either giving you advice or with their hand on an open door. A casual comment or a friendly acquaintance giving someone important information or a chance that helped them make more progress in a couple of years than, than most people make in their whole lives has changed the lives of many people. People who are successful are often described as nice. If you are known as a good person, others will help you. The golden rule says to treat others the way you want to be treated. When a person is positive, they trigger the law of attraction. 
which brings people and situations into their life that are good for them. It's true that being nice will make you lucky. Being honest and having integrity. Being honest and having integrity are the most valued and admired traits in both friendship and leadership. The most important people in your life are the ones you care about the most and trust the most. As Shakespeare said, to thine own self be true and it must follow as the night the day. You can't lie to anyone. Being honest with yourself is what personal ethics are all about. This means you should always be honest with yourself. Being honest and having ethics are must for success in business at any level and in any field. Luck will come your way like honey draws bees or a moth to a light if you're known as a person of honor, quality, and truth. Intensity. A person's intense drive to succeed may be the trait that makes them stand out the most. In the end, the winner is always the person who wants something longer and harder than the other person. People are more likely to learn what they need to learn and do what they need to do to get what they want when they work hard for it. You will read more books, listen to more tapes, take more different classes, meet more people and go farther. You will work longer hours and try more new things. It will make it much more likely that you will be in the right place at the right time. And if you combine the seriousness of your purpose with the, the trait of persistence, you will become a natural force that can't be stopped. It's said that you will have more happiness than most people if you are very clear about what you want and are willing to put in a lot of work to get it. You'll go farther and faster than anyone else if you decide to learn your field and work hard at it with a lot of energy and enthusiasm. Being a happy, positive person with a good reputation for honesty and integrity will put you on the side of the angels. You will also be one of the luckiest people in the world if you support every wish and goal with unwavering confidence and persistence and keep going no matter what. Being lucky is up to you. If you live the life you want, your future will be endless. As we come to the end of the seven steps to reaching your goals, let's take a moment to think about what we've learned and how far we've come. The road to success isn't always a straight line and it's often full of hurdles and problems that test our resolve. We have, however, given ourselves the tools and strategies we need to face these challenges with grace and drive by following these seven steps religiously. Before you leave this meeting, remember that the way to your goals is not a sprint, but a run that requires patience, persistence, and unwavering commitment. You're getting closer to your dreams with every step, no matter how small. Even when things go wrong, they just serve as stepping stones to bigger and better things. You have the power to do anything you set your mind to, so go out into the world with confidence and purpose. But the lessons you've learned and the principles you've agreed to follow today help you reach your goals. And may your journey be filled with growth, happiness, and plenty. Thank you for giving me the chance to be a part of this life-changing journey with you. May you always aim for perfection in everything you do, and may your dreams reach even higher heights than your goals. It is a summation of more than 20 years of research on one subject. And that is why some people do so well in life, while so many more do not. And the first thing, let's talk about the magic word. The experts call it the most important word as far as the results we get from life are concerned in this or any other language. And that word is attitude. It is our attitude toward life which will determine life's attitude toward us. Let's face the fact honestly that we shape our own lives and the shapes of them will be determined by our attitudes. A person with a poor attitude toward learning, for example, isn't going to learn much until he changes his attitude. If we take the attitude that we can do something, we generally will do it, an attitude of failure and will whip before we start. So we know then that what we receive from life, what we accomplish or fail to accomplish, is due in large measure to our overall attitude. William James of Harvard University put it this way, the greatest discovery of my generation is that human beings can alter their lives by altering their attitudes of mind. It isn't it wonderful that we have this measure of control. Before we start talking about our own attitude toward the world, let's talk about our attitude toward ourselves, since it is the attitude we take toward ourselves which determines our attitude toward the world. Now right here we come to a rather strange fact. 
We're so familiar with ourselves, we tend to take ourselves for granted. We tend to minimize the things we can accomplish, the goals we can reach, and for some equally strange reason, believe others can accomplish things in our field which we cannot. There are literally millions of human beings living narrow, dark, and frustrated lives, living defensively simply because they take a defensive, doubtful attitude toward themselves, and as a result toward life in general. Many people are suspicious of an opposed change. Yet change is the one thing in life on which we can absolutely count. People who stay young all the years of their lives not only welcome change, but see it for what it really is, new opportunity and new chances for further fulfillment. Attitude is a reflection, a result of a person's will. It is incalculably powerful. It can bring about marvelous results for us, but we need to train it patiently day by day. Now let's talk about the attitudes of people who are successful. The top 5% of the people who go sailing through life from one success to another, and who even when they fail at something shrug it off and hit right out again. No matter who the person is or what he does, men and women in sales, business executives, people in all the professions, wives and mothers, students, top people in the armed forces, public servants, men and women in the service of religion, working men and women in all fields of endeavor, Wherever you find a person doing an outstanding job and getting outstanding results, you will find a person with the right kind of attitude. These people take the attitude toward themselves, that they can accomplish what they set out to accomplish, that there's no good reason on earth why they can't be successful. They have a healthy attitude toward themselves, and as a result toward life and the things they want to accomplish. And because of this, they achieve some remarkable things and they come to be called successful, outstanding, brilliant, lucky, and a lot of other things. They're quite frequently no more brilliant or outstanding than the majority of the people by whom they're surrounded. But they did develop the right attitude and they found their accomplishments not too difficult. And many times, surprisingly easy simply because it seems that so few are really trying. Really believe in themselves, successful people come in all shapes and sizes and in widely varying degrees of intelligence, background and so on. But they all have one thing in common. They expect more good out of life than bad. They expect to succeed more than they fail. If you want something worthwhile, take the attitude that there are a lot more reasons why you can have it than there are that you cannot. And set out to earn it. Go after it, work at it, ask for it. Nine times out of ten, you get it. Our environment is really a mirror of our mental attitude. If we don't like our environment, we have to change our attitude first. Now the world plays no favorites, it's impersonal. It doesn't care whether we change or not. Adopting a good healthy attitude toward life doesn't affect the world and the people in it nearly as much as it affects us. It would be impossible to even estimate the number of jobs which had been lost, the number of promotions missed, the number of sales not made, the number of marriages ruined by poor attitudes, but you can number in the millions. Your jobs which are held but hated. The marriages which are tolerated but unhappy. All because of people who are waiting for the world and others to change toward them instead of being big enough and wise enough to at least make a test which would prove beyond any shadow of a doubt where most or at least a big part of the trouble lies. Studies made of the lives of literally thousands of successful people have shown that they radiate confidence assurance. They expect success, and they get it. You can spot these people by the way they walk, by the way they look and act. You can feel about them when they enter a room. They may be short and fat or tall and thin or any combination in between, but they have about them the attitude of success and the record of greener passion. I'll get into this next statement, but right now I want you to realize if you don't already that in five years or less, you can get right to the top of the work you're now doing. I know this, but the important question here is, do you know this? The minute you do know it, you'll have this right attitude I'm talking about. The easiest and most effective means of forming a good attitude habit is to begin to act as though you have a good, positive, expectant attitude toward life. That's right. Begin right now to walk act and look as though you belong to this group. If you're already in the top 5%, you'll know what I mean. If you've never tried it, you'll be amazed at what happens. Actions trigger feelings just as feelings trigger action. Now let me tell you a little test you can make which will prove beyond any shadow of a doubt that a good attitude can change a person's life as dramatically as walking from a darkened room into the bright. 
clear light of day. Not long ago, I read a line which went, Life is dull only to dull people. This is true, but it also could have read, Life is interesting only to interesting people, or Life is successful. And what I'm trying to say is that you must first become mentally, from an attitude standpoint, that which you wish to achieve. Famous restaurateur was being interviewed by a reporter who asked, When did you become successful? He replied, I was successful when I was sleeping on park benches because I knew what I wanted to do and that I would do it. In short, his attitude had been one of success of expecting success long before the material. The tangible rewards of success had been earned. We'll get into this particular phase of lead the field in record number three, a worthy destination. But for now, remember that a person must act. Then because of these things, feel successful before the success he seeks can come. Chances are you know people who seem to be what others call lucky. All kinds of good and wonderful things seem to happen to them. And they give the impression of happily sailing through life. Having a wonderful time and getting more accomplished in a year than most people do in five. This has been figured out very scientifically. And if anyone will conscientiously go about the test I'm going to recommend is stay with it every day for the next 30 days without fail. That person can join this small, happy, and extremely productive group of people. But they'll find themselves becoming lucky, as they say. And most of their problems will pretty well take care of themselves. Of this, you can be sure. The results would be nothing short of amazing. Hello. It makes no difference how good a person's attitude has been in the past. But anything can be improved upon, and it's the small refinements upon something already good that... Here's the test for the next 30 days. Act toward the world, everything, and everyone with whom you come in contact with the attitude which represents the kind of results you want to achieve. That is, if the result you want is more success than what you're doing, act as though you are already in possession of the success you seek. If you want others to treat you with admiration and respect, treat others with admiration and respect first. But have you ever stopped to think of this? Every human being on earth is the most important human being on earth as far as he or she is concerned. You may never get anyone to admit it, but it's a fact. So for the next 30 days, treat every person with whom you come in contact as the most important person on earth, remembering as you do so that as far as that person is concerned, he is not the reason. I say treating everyone in this fashion is mainly because this is the way human beings ought to treat each other and because it will help you form a habit that will bring you amazing and delightful results for the rest of your life. Have you ever noticed that the higher you grow in any organization of value, the nicer the people seem to become? You see, the bigger the person, the easier it is to talk to him, to get along with him, to do business with him. You know why? It's because he's got a good attitude and people with the best attitudes just naturally gravitate toward the top. Who, for 30 days, act toward others in the world at large in exactly the same manner you want the world and others to act toward you. Treat your wife or husband as the person he or she really is. The most important person in your life. The same with the children. Carry out into the world each morning for 30 days. The kind of attitude you would have if you were the most successful human being on earth and notice how it quickly develops into an habitual attitude. In a person does that. He should realize he has already placed himself on the road to what he seeks. He is right now in the top 5% of the people in this or any other country. He has prepared the ground and planted the seed. He has made of himself a magnet, an embodiment of that which he seeks. But before metal can be cast into a desired shape, the mold, the expectant receptacle must first be fashioned. Before building can be erected, the excavation must be made and the foundation laid. Before a person can achieve the kind of life he wants, he must become that kind of individual. He must think, act, talk, walk, and conduct himself in all of his affairs as would the person he wishes to become. He is then actually that person, and the things that person would have and do would naturally come to him almost immediately. A change would be noticed. Irritations that used to frustrate and annoy disappear. When some less informed individual gives you a bad time, stay on the track. When someone cuts in front of you with his car or axe in any other manner that shows his ignorance and lack of courtesy, don't permit yourself to drop to his level. 
that he had for that's what he really deserves. That's the very group a person doesn't want to belong to. And if he acts like them, well, let's face it, he belongs with them. There's nothing in the world that men, women, and children want to need more than the feeling that they're important, that they're needed and respected. They will give their love, their affection, their respect, and their business to the person who fills this need. So the magic word is attitude. In summing up a few points to keep in mind one. It is our attitude at the beginning of a task which more than anything else will affect its successful outcome. Two, it is our attitude toward life which determines life's attitude toward us. Three, we're interdependent. It is impossible to succeed without others. It is our attitude toward others which will determine their attitude toward us. Therefore, before a person can achieve the kind of life he wants, he must become that kind of individual. He must think, act, talk, walk and conduct himself in all of his affairs, as would the person he wishes to become. Five, the higher you go in any organization of value, the better will be the attitude you'll find. Six, your mind can hold only one thought at a time. And since there's nothing at all to be gained by being negative, be positive. Seven, the deepest craving of human beings is to be needed to feel important, to be appreciated. To give it to them, and they'll return it to you. Eight, Look for the best in new ideas. If someone said, I've never met a person I couldn't learn something from. He nodded. Don't waste the valuable time broadcasting personal problems. It probably won't help you. It cannot help others. Ten. Don't talk about your health unless it's good. Eleven. Radiate the attitude of well-being. Of confidence of a person who knows where he's going. This will inspire those around you. And you'll find good things will begin happening to you. Well, lastly, for the next 30 days, treat everyone with whom you come in contact as the most important person on earth. If you do this for 30 days, you'll do it for the rest of your life. In the next recording, I'll talk to you about greener pastures. But now, in closing, remember the words of Walter Dill Scott of Northwestern University. His success or failure in any undertaking is caused more by the mental attitude than by mental capacities. He has Dill. South Bay millionaires look into every failure for something good. And surprise, surprise, they always find it. And they always find the lesson. Successful people say, what can I learn from this that will make me smarter next time? Your biggest problem today could be the biggest gift that you have ever received. Because it may contain within it the lesson that will make you successful. If you stop thinking about what happened and who's to blame, and you start looking for the gift within your problem, Sometimes it can transform your life. Take a look at the very most difficult experience that you're in right now. And ask yourself, what is the most valuable lesson I can learn from this experience? And the Bible says, seek and ye shall find. It doesn't say seek and occasionally you might find something. One of the very best ways is to sit in solitude when you have a major problem or a major issue in your life. Just sit quietly, which takes tremendous discipline the first few times you do it. At about 25 or 26 minutes, your mind goes clear. Any issue that you've been dealing with, the answer just comes to you. And if you've never done it before, just practice it once. Sometime today, you just allow yourself to calm down and think. And the most amazing things will happen. You'll start to hear what is called the still, small voice within. Now here's another way to think better. When you're dealing with any kind of a situation, write down every detail of the problem or situation. Just write it down, write it down, write it down. You would not have triggered that superconscious solution if you hadn't taken the time to think on paper. It is almost as though in the very act of writing what is wrong, you start to discover ways of making it, as opposed to mentally pondering it, creates a space between you and the problem. You see, writing about events, circumstances that occur, helps you to clarify exactly what has happened. We become more factual, more accurate, and certainly more realistic. Then, as we reread what we have written, we create a new picture in our mind to replace the distorted picture we have been working. Write about a current dilemma you are facing. 
Perhaps it is a personal problem, business matter, a family issue or a financial problem. But remember, writing out the problem is only the first step creative problem solving and effective decision making. The next step is to carefully analyze what you have written. First, exaggerations or distortions of the truth. Second, tendency to blame circumstances or someone else for your problem instead of seeing yourself as the cause. Third, a tendency to expect circumstances or still worse, other people to change in order for your problem to be solved. And finally, look closely for weak points in the obstacle where you might attack to bring that obstacle to its need. You must learn to view your problems like a scientist who puts tiny organisms on a slide. And two, as you examine your problem, do as any scientist would do. Record your observation. Sure to record the ultimate conclusion to the lab. If it worked well, then it is worth remembering. Every mistake has its own price tag. The most costly error anyone can make is an error unlearned and often Becoming a more effective thinker on paper is a sure way of becoming a more effective person in practice. Here are some good times to reflect. First, at the end of the day, take a few minutes and go back over your day, where you went and what you did and what you said, what worked and what didn't. What do you want to do again? What do you want to correct? Another time to reflect is at the end of the week. Take a few hours. Take a half a day at the end of the month. Take a weekend at the end of the year. Reason? To make the past more valuable. Sophisticated people have learned how to gather up the past then invest it in the future. Gather all your experiences and invest all that you have learned and felt in your next experience. And the more value, the more substance, the more information, the more wisdom you can gather from all of your yesterdays, the more exciting your future becomes. How to gather what we've learned in order to invest it in what we want to become. And in studying your own life, be sure to study the negative as well as the positive. Your failures, as well as your successes. One of the ways we learn how to do something right is simply by doing it wrong. Doing it wrong is a great school for learning. What a close at hand and emotionally impactful way to learn from your own experience to improve your thinking. The other person can give you a perspective that completely changes your ideas. Now here's another way to think better. Practice zero-based thinking continually. Ask yourself on a regular basis, is there anything in my life that, knowing what I now know, I wouldn't get into again today if I had to do it over? The biggest time waster of all is for you to continue to pursue a course of action, a job, a career, or a relationship that is the wrong one for you. Because we're living in a time of day. Well, they 70% of your decisions have to be raw in the fullness of time. A key indicator, a zero-based thinking situation, is stress. Whenever you feel chronic stress, dissatisfaction, or unhappiness with any person or situation that seems to go on and on, you should ask yourself, knowing what I now know, would I get into this situation again today? If your answer is no, then the next question is, how do I get out of this situation? Then how fast? Remember, whatever the situation, if it is an unhappy situation, that is probably not the chance. Probably going to get worse over time. The only question then is, do you have the courage and care to deal honestly with your life? Really is. When you stand back and put your life in this point of view on a regular basis, you will begin to see all kinds of dirties change what you are doing, that they are more in line with what you really Success begins with you exercising your power of choice and using it to systematic, purposeful control over the thoughts you hold in your conscious mind. Most people are preoccupied by a continuous stream of disorganized thought. You've experienced this phenomenon lost in thought with almost no memory of it at all. Many of your habitual routines and conversations is so that 
low level of awareness. Sometimes this preoccupation, you use it to avoid thinking about parts of your life that you'd rather not confront or deal with. Sometimes it is you've been going through the motions for so long that your thought processes are unthinking. Now to become all, you must become more alert, more aware, take more control over your thought process. You move in the direction of your own choosing rather than steering blindly on metal autopilot. Is most there. You begin the process of awakening by reflecting on your life, past, present, future. Assume that whatever your current situation or difficult, it is exactly what you require right now. Teach you something that you need to know before you can continue on your upward journey. With this perspective, you can see that every experience it is a positive experience. If you choose to view it, the opportunity for growth and self-mastery. Now, project backward and with calmness, clarity, positive mental attitude. Think about how every previous experience and situation of your life might have been sent to you exactly the right time. It teaches you something you needed to learn so that you could continue moving toward the wonderful life that awaits you. As you stand back and appreciate the incredibly complex interconnectedness of events that have brought you to where you are in life right now, you will begin to develop the perspective of the philosophy. You will be feeling that your life is part of something greater than yourself and that everything fits together and happens for a reason. Human being, you must take control of the internal and external aspects of your life and get them all playing in harmony around a central theme of your own choosing. All real and lasting success comes from organizing your life in harmony with these general principles. The first law is the law of expectation. It's truly amazing. When we comfortably expect something worthwhile to materialize in our life, it invariably does. It gives each of us a kind of magic wand with which we can bring all sorts of interesting and rewarding events and things into our lives. Those who have come in in this battle, Consciously and actively work at it to regularly do the most amazing things. If you have trouble maintaining this powerful force, he will mind your kind. Christ will see it every morning when you get up, and at odd times during the day, can help you get on course and form a very valuable new habit. You apply the law of expectations in your own life by affiliating to gain something worthwhile from everything that happens. Make your life into an adventure. Your expectations would quickly become self fulfilling part. Second law is the law of subjectivity. Any idea or thought you accept true in your conscious mind be accepted without question. Your subconscious will immediately begin working to bring it into your reality. Take time each day to sit and soak your mind. Positive. Whatever you dwell upon long enough and hard enough will eventually materialize in the world around you. Take a sheet of paper and make a list of all the things that you want to see in your life. Write down everything. For the next 24 hours, think and talk only about the things on your list. See if you can get through one entire day without upset or worrying about anything. See if you have the willpower and strength of character. Think about only what you want for one whole day. This exercise will give you a real insight into where you are in your development and it will also show you how far you have yet to go. As I read story after story of famous men and women, and as I reflected on their biographies and autobiographies, I was struck by the common thread to all of them. They all seem to have or to develop an unshakable belief, their ability to overcome all obstacles and reach some great height. This belief or conviction seemed to give them powers not possessed the ordinary person. They went on to accomplish remarkable things, often against overwhelming odds and in defiance of the predictions of people around them. When I left high school and began drifting job to job, I had no central purpose or aim, aside from somehow being in the world. Like most people, I slipped into the reactive, responsive mode. I took whatever job came along, I associated with whoever happened to be around at the time. Instead of planning my life, I just reacted to my external environment and responded to my emotional and physical needs. I assumed that this was all there is. I came to accept unconsciously that what I knew and what I was doing constituted the upper limits of all possible for me. The best I thought I could do was to react as intelligently and as destructively as possible, try not to make too many mistakes. 
When my studies in psychology, religion, and metaphysics mentioned the subconscious mind, I neither understood it very well, nor did I attempt to use it to help me. The more I learned about the mental laws that govern our behavior and determine our results, the more I realized there was a hidden dimension of achievement that I was missing. I understood the meaning of human potential. Your subconscious mind is enormously powerful. When you use it properly, it can help you to move more rapidly toward the achievement of your goals and desires to every green pot. You can use your subconscious mind for creation or destruction, for good or for evil. So your potential, you must learn how to act it at will and use it for your purposes intelligently. Most people are work every day with their minds. They use their powerful mental computers for only the most rudimentary tasks. And then they wonder why their work is so hard, and why they seem to produce so little. The answer I found was to work harder, to use more of my mental power, rather than my physical power, to achieve my goals. Successful people are those who have learned how to operate their conscious, subconscious, and to terminate, enabling them to get things they want far faster. With much less effort, your subconscious mind is like a huge memory bank. It permanently stores everything that ever happened. Your subconscious mind also practices homeostasis, your mental realm, keeping thinking and acting in a matter consistent with what you've done and said in the past. It has memorized all your comforts that works to keep you in them. You can feel your subconscious pulling you back toward your comfort zone each time you try something new. Even thinking about doing something different from what you're accustomed to will make you feel tense and uneasy. A major difference between leaders and also ran is always stretching them, pushing themselves out of their comfort zone. They're very aware of how quickly the comfort zone in any area becomes a rut. They know that complacency is the great enemy of creativity. No, hey. But for you to grow, to get out of your comfort zone, you have to be willing to feel awkward and uncomfortable doing it the first few times. Here's a five-step process you can use to implement this method to help bring about any desired mental, emotional, or physical condition. Step 1. Verbalize and affirm your desired outcome. For example, if you're wrestling with a problem involving someone else, you could say, I'm laying confident. Your statement should be a clear description of your desired outcome or end state. Don't get wrapped up in detail. Don't worry about the Step 2. Visualize. Clearly see the outcome you desire in this situation. See yourself and everyone else involved. Happy and at peace with the outcome. This will require not a emotionalize your combined formation and visualization by creating the feeling you will actually experience when everything is resolved happy. 4. Release the situation completely. Just let it go as you would if someone you trusted said that he would take care of it and that you need not think of it. Step 5 is realization. The appearance in your outer world. Solution. The realization or manifestation of your desire happens in direct proportion to which you have completely released all concern for the outcome. Turn your mind to other things. This attitude of calm, confident expectation that all will be well is an experience of higher consciousness. It doesn't matter what you call it. All that matters is that it works with amazing reliability. One of the most important characteristics of leaders and top people in every area of life is that they know who they are, what they believe in, and what they stand for. Average people are usually confused about their goals, values, and ideals, and as a result they go back and forth and accomplish very little. Men and women who become leaders, on the other hand, with the same or even fewer abilities and opportunities, go on to accomplish great things in whatever they attempt. Life is lived from the inside out. The very core of your personality is your values. Your values are what make you the person you are. Everything you do on the outside is dictated and determined by your values on the inside, whether clear or fuzzy. The greater clarity you have regarding your values on the inside, the more precise and effective will be your actions on the outside.
You can imagine your personality by thinking of a target with concentric rings. From the inside to the outside, your personality is also made up of five rings. Starting from the center, your values radiate outward to the next circle. Your beliefs. Your values determine your beliefs about yourself and the world around you. If you have positive values such as love, compassion, and generosity, you will believe that people in your world are deserving of these values, and you will treat them accordingly. Your beliefs, in turn, determine the third ring of your personality, your expectations. If you have positive values, you will believe yourself to be a good person. If you believe yourself to be a good person, you will expect good things to happen to you. If you expect good things to happen to you, you will be positive, cheerful, and future-oriented. You will look for the good in other people and situations. The fourth level of your personality, determined by your expectations, is your attitude. Your attitude will be an outward manifestation or reflection of your values, beliefs, and expectations. For example, if your value is that this is a good world to live in and your belief is that you are going to be very successful in life, you will expect that everything that happens to you is helping you in some way. As a result, you will have a positive mental attitude toward other people and they will respond positively towards you. You will be a more cheerful and optimistic person. You will be someone that others want to work with and for, buy from, sell to, and generally help to be more successful. This is why a positive mental attitude seems to go hand in hand with great success in every walk of life. The fifth ring or level of life is your actions. Your actions on the outside will ultimately be a reflection of your innermost values, beliefs, and expectations on the inside. This is why what you achieve in life and work will be determined more by what is going on inside of you than by any other factor. You can always tell how a person thinks most of the time by looking at the conditions of their outer lives. A positive, optimistic, goal and future oriented person on the inside will enjoy a happy, successful and prosperous life on the outside most of the time. Aristotle said, that the ultimate aim or purpose of human life is to achieve your own happiness. You are the very happiest when what you are doing on the outside is congruent with your values on the inside. When you are living in complete alignment with what you consider to be good and right and true, you will automatically feel happy and positive about yourself and your world. Your goals must be congruent with your values and your values must be congruent with your goals this is why clarifying your values is often the starting point to high achievement in peak performance. Values. Clarification requires that you think through what is really important to you in life. You then organize your entire life around these values. Any attempt to live on the outside in a manner that contradicts the values you hold on the inside will cause you stress, negativity, unhappiness, pessimism, and even anger and frustration. Your chief responsibility to yourself in the creation of a great life is therefore for you to develop absolute clarity about your values in everything you do. Stephen Covey once said, Be sure that as you scramble up the ladder of success, it is leaning against the right building. Carly Simon once sang a famous line, Is this all there is? Many people work hard on the outside to achieve goals that they think they want only to find at the end of the day that they get no joy or satisfaction from their accomplishments. This occurs when the outer accomplishment is not in harmony with your inner values. Don't let this happen to you. Socrates said, the unexamined life is not worth living. This applies to your values as much as to any other area of your life. Values clarification is something you do on a go, forward basis. You continually stop the clock like a timeout in a football game and ask, What are my values in this area? In the Bible it says, What does it benefit a man if he achieves the whole world but loses his own soul? The happiest people in the world today are those who are living in harmony with their innermost convictions and values. The unhappiest people are those who are attempting to live incongruent with what they truly value and believe. Self-trust is the foundation of greatness. Self-trust comes from listening to your intuition to your still small voice within. Men and women begin to become great when they begin to listen to their inner voices and absolutely trust that they're being guided by a higher power each step of the way. 
Living in alignment with your true values is the royal road to self-confidence, self-respect, and personal pride. In fact, almost every human problem can be resolved by returning to values. Whenever you experience stress of any kind, look into yourself and ask, in what way am I compromising my innermost values in this situation? How can you tell what your values really are? The answer is simple. You always demonstrate your true values in your actions, and especially your actions under pressure. Whenever you are forced to choose between one behavior and another, you will always act consistent with what is most important and valuable to you at that moment. Values, in fact, are organized in a hierarchy. You have a series of values, some of them very intense and important, and some of them weaker and less important. One of the most important exercises you can engage in to determine who you really are and what you really want is to organize your values by priority. Once you're clear about the relative importance of your values, you can then organize your outer life so that it is in alignment with them. There are some insightful ways to help you determine your true values. First of all, you can look at your past. How have you behaved under pressure in the past? What choices did you make with your time or money when you were forced to choose? Your answers will give you an indication of your predominant values at that time. Dale Carnegie once wrote, tell me what gives a person his greatest feeling of importance and I will tell you his entire philosophy of life. What makes you feel important? What raises your self-esteem? What increases your sense of self-respect and personal pride? What have you accomplished in your past life that has given you the greatest sense of pride and satisfaction? These answers will give you good indications of your true values. The spiritual teacher Emmett Fox wrote about the importance of discovering your heart's desire. What is your heart's desire? What is it that deep down in your heart, more than anything else you would like to be have or do in life? As a friend of mine asks, what do you want to be famous for? What words would you like people to use to describe you when you are not there? What would you like people to say about you when you have passed on? What would you like someone to say about you at your funeral? How do you want your family, friends and children to remember you? How would you want them to talk about you after you had left this earth? How would you like people to talk about you? What kind of a reputation do you have today? What kind of a reputation would you like to have sometime in the future? What would you have to begin doing today in order to create the kind of reputation that you desire? Many people have had difficult experiences growing up. They have fallen onto hard times and become associated with the wrong people. They have behaved in ways that were illegal or socially unacceptable, sometimes. They have even been convicted and sent to prison for their crimes. But at a certain point in life, they decided to change. They thought seriously about the kind of person that they wanted to be known as and thought of in the future. They decided to change their lives by changing the values that they lived by. By making these decisions and sticking to them, they changed their lives. And what others have done, you can do as well. Remember, it doesn't matter where you're coming from. All that really matters is where you're going. If you were an outstanding person in every respect, how would you behave toward others? What sort of impression would you leave on others after you had met them and spoken with them? Imagine you could be a completely excellent person. How would you be different from today? In psychology, your level of self-esteem determines your level of happiness. Self-esteem is defined as how much you like yourself. Your self-esteem, in turn, is determined by your self-image. This is the way you see yourself and think about yourself in your day-to-day -day interactions with others. Your self-image is shaped by your self-ideal. Your self-ideal is made up of the virtues, values, goals, hopes, dreams, and aspirations that you have for yourself sometime in the future. Here is what psychologists have discovered. The more your behavior in the moment is consistent with what you feel your ideal behavior should be, the more you like and respect yourself, and the happier you are. On the other hand, whenever you behave in a way that is inconsistent with your ideal of your very best behavior, you experience a negative self-image. You feel yourself to be performing below your best, below what you truly aspire to. As a result, your self-esteem and your level of happiness decrease. 
the moment that you begin walking, talking, and behaving in ways that are consistent with your highest ideals, your self-image improves, your self-esteem increases, and you feel happier about yourself and your world. For example, whenever you are complimented or praised by another person or given a prize or an award for accomplishment, your self-esteem goes up sometimes dramatically. You feel happy about yourself. You feel that your whole life is in harmony and that you are living congruent with your highest ideals. You feel successful and valuable. Your aim should be to deliberately and systematically create the circumstances that raise yourself, team in everything you do. You should live your life as if you were already the outstanding person that you intend to be sometime in the future. What are your values today with regard to your work and your career? Do you believe in the values of integrity, hard work, dependability, creativity, cooperation, initiative, ambition, and getting along well with people? People who live these values in their work are vastly more successful and more highly esteemed than people who do not. What are your values? with regard to your family. Do you believe in the importance of unconditional love, continuous encouragement and reinforcement, patience, forgiveness, generosity, warmth and attentiveness? People who practice these values consistently with the important people in their lives are much happier than people who do not. What are your values with regard to money and financial success? Do you believe in the importance of honesty, industry, thrift, frugality, education, excellent performance, quality, and persistence. People who practice these values are far more successful in their financial lives than those who do not and far faster as well. What about your health? Do you believe in the importance of self-discipline, self-mastery, and self-control with regard to diet, exercise, and rest? Do you set high standards for your levels of health and fitness and then work every day to live up to those standards? People who practice these values live longer healthier lives than people who do not remember you become what you think about most of the time successful happy people think about their values and how they can live and practice those values in every part of their lives every single day the big payoff is that the more you live your life consistent with your values the happier healthier more positive and energetic you will be perhaps the most important value of all is that of integrity a billionaire once said to me, integrity is not so much a value in itself, it is rather the value that guarantees all the other values. Wow, this was a great insight for me. Once you have decided that you are going to live consistent with a value, your level of integrity determines whether or not you follow through on your commitment. The more you discipline yourself to live consistent with the very best you know, the greater is your level of personal integrity and the higher your level of integrity the happier and more powerful you will feel in everything you do. Truly great men and women are always described as having high levels of integrity. They live their lives consistent with their highest values, even when no one is looking. Mediocre men and women, on the other hand, are always cutting corners and compromising their integrity, especially when no one is watching. Decide today to be a man or woman of honor. Resolve to tell the truth and to live in truth with yourself and others. Crystallize your values in each area of your life. Write them down. Think of how you would behave if you were living consistent with those values and then refuse to compromise them for any reason. Once you accept complete responsibility for your life and for everything that happens to you and then create an ideal picture of your perfect future and clarify your values, you are now ready to begin setting clear specific goals in every area of your life. You are now on the launching ramp and ready to take off toward the stars.